If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, spiritual coach, spiritual uh, uh Spiritual business coach, transformational shaman. I, can't, I don't even know what that is. What's my name? What day is it? Yes, I? exactly. What is this? Ah. Say your name so I don't screw it up. This is my best friend in book at Bay. <laughs> Catherine Laranger. Laranger. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, this is the same day as we recorded last time. So yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. My really. brain is still not working. So we're just going to be there. Catherine's also a spiritual business coach and a badass in, in and of herself. So we are talking today about managing conflict, oh. which is its own thing, right? So run away, uh, run away, run away. I know. <laughs> yeah. A lot of my people are big conflict avoiders, right? Um, and part of that is just because, you know, there's this n- sense of not good enough that, that tends to be in place in them automatically. And then on top of that is this, because they resist conflict, they avoid it so well. By the time they get to the point of going into the conflict, they are ready to explode. And they often do because there's the well of rage that they haven't cleared out yet. And so when you wait too long to address a conflict, that well of rage builds and builds and builds, especially if you're Scorpio like me. And, and, uh, and it just, it, it explodes all over people. And then, then that just reinforces this idea that conflict is bad, right? Because it, it's just this awful, big, huge thing, right? Whereas if you address it early and often, it doesn't have to be right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've, I've been sort of monologuing here for a minute. So why don't you go ahead and jump in if you have something to say I'll just keep going (laughs) you know I think with with conflict I think that the kind of first I would say the first step is learning how to feel safe in yourself and grounded right and how to regulate your own physio physiology and emotions so if you think about, you know, conflict, just noticing like, what's the first thing that comes up for you? Did you grow up in a home where it was avoided, where it was like really common, where people like had outbursts or rage or so for some people, it can feel really, really unsafe. Conflict can feel like very unsafe. So it's about learning how to, to be safe in your own body and be safe for yourself so that you can then manage it and, and, and and not negotiate but navigate navigate i guess in a way that's that's healthy cuz conflict is actually a healthy thing yeah i i actually grew up with well the first 5 years of my life with a father who was a rageaholic so mm. i remember like going into the coat closet to and pulling all the coats down on top of me to get yes. away from the energy of the rage as he was screaming at my mother at the top of his lungs. And she was yes. avoiding him by reading a book. Right. Yeah. And he, yeah. that of course just made him more angry because she wasn't paying attention. And I was just like, oh, I've just got to get away from this energy. And I'm just piling stuff on top of me to get away from it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I yeah. had a little bit of avoidance of conflict for a long time. And I also had my well, own well was, of rage, it was, right? It wasn't safe. Right. Like yeah, totally not safe. Yeah, yeah. Not safe at all. Yeah, yeah. Not safe at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, when I, when I was addressing that for myself, I first had to address the, the well of rage for me because, you know, I didn't trust myself. This was another piece is that you, you, when you have a well of rage inside of you and you go from zero to 150 in five, in two seconds flat, right. Yes. Then, you know, you start to not trust yourself and you will actually restrict your access to your own power because you don't trust yourself because the well of rage is there. Right. And so you have to, you have to work on and emptying that out. And that's part of the work that I do in my work. And, and once you've got that emptied out, then you have to start to learn how to identify where your boundaries are. And now you're, okay, now that's where my boundaries are. And so now I have to know when my boundaries get crossed, I have to be able to say something about it quickly mm-hmm. and not hold on to it for three or four months and build up a rage again, right? And then I have to be willing to reinforce it if somebody doesn't acknowledge 
the the boundary cross and and the rebuff right and so you know i i i talk about this in a way that's like okay here's my boundary don't cross it mm -hmm. person crosses it and it's like what part of the word no did you not understand right mm -hmm. that's the reinforcement mm -hmm. and then if they cross it again you're like okay you've just lost access to me and i'm leaving and you remove yourself from the situation right that's the very simple format mm -hmm. for it it's not yeah. going to look exactly that way every time but it is the the structure right it's like mm -hmm. i will set my boundary i will give you a chance to honor it a second time if you've crossed it because maybe i've trained you that i don't have boundaries and then i need to give you a chance to adjust to the new vermin version i'll give you a second chance right and after that nope i'm done i'll be leaving now and until you can prove to me that you can respect my boundaries you don't get access to me anymore right it's a very simple format for people who don't know how to do it right and the oh. yep go ahead i would say although in like we're i i, I just suddenly have this like Oh wait a minute! This is all we're also talking about business here. So, in yeah. in business, there there might not be times where that maybe it's like with a, a client or a vendor, or maybe you're in a contract with somebody, you're doing some work with somebody, right? And you've got deliverables, or they've got deliverables. So another you know kind of tool that I would that I would use is to to ask myself how can I get curious about what's going on and how can I become a more flexible communicator? So to have a different perspective on, so uh, uh, kind of thinking of an example here where we had a client and they owed us like a law, fairly significant amount of money, I think like $350,000 or something. And they were getting, you know, really, really, really late and that was having an impact on our business. And so I was noticing I was going into that kind of getting really pissed off and angry and they're this and they're that. And then I was like, wait a minute, Catherine, like just noticing how is that serving you? It's not. Okay. So what if I was curious about this, right? So I've been doing all of the kind of things to try to collect a receivable that you would, you know, do, but how can I be a more flexible communicator in this situation? And when I did that, it shifted my energy again, because there was a, there was a specific outcome I was wanting, right? Yeah. So it depends because there's not in, in your personal life for sure. And then depending on your business life, there might be times where you, you can, you know, walk away when there's a, a boundary that's been crossed, but there also might be times where you need to actually get a resolution on something. Well, yes. And it's never okay to put up with being abused. So, Absolutely. you know, Absolutely. if a client is being yeah. abusive, yeah. you, you need to hang up the phone, walk away, whatever, Absolutely. be like, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah, I'm not a client, a vendor, anybody. You're just like, Absolutely. okay, we're going to yes. talk when you can be civil and we're going to yeah. hang up the phone right now. Right. And yeah. that can happen with business with partners. It can happen yeah. with vendors. It can happen with anybody. Absolutely. You just need to agree to stop having the conversation until everybody Absolutely. can be civil. Right. Yeah. And yeah. if they can't agree, then you need to agree for them by hanging up the phone or walking away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, you circle back around later, but, you know, I had, yeah. I had to do that with my mom one time. <laughs> <laughs> I was like really sick. I was like really, really sick. And she calls me and she's like talking about something. I'm like, mom, I, I'm really sick. I don't have the energy for this right now. I can't be present. And she just kept talking and I'm like, mom, I'm like, I'm really sick. Like, do you not hear I'm really sick? And I'm like, okay, I need to hang up now. Bye. And I just like, <laughs> <laughs> yep. And that's just, sometimes you got to do it. Right. Yeah. So, you know, when you have conflict in business, um, you know, sometimes it's the, the taking the distance. So like I have a JV partner I'm working with and she was, having a, a lot of she was she was sick like she was actually going to be going into the hospital for surgery or had just i can't remember and then so i i was sick as a dog and we had this blow up where she's like fine we just won't do this and i'm like let's just take a break <laughs> like, you're you're whoa, straight whoa, out of whoa, surgery whoa. 
I'm sick as a dog. Let's just take a break. Let's let's walk yeah. away. We'll come back. Let's let's each yeah. let's each like feel better take and then we'll come back out. and talk about it. Have right? a nap, right? Just yeah, have exactly. Have a nap. <laughs> yeah. And and we came back and it was yeah. fine, right? But yeah. you know, sometimes you just you you can't let things be catastrophic, right? Yes. That's yes. the thing, right? Yes. So but you do need to be willing to say things. And so let's talk about coaching because a lot of a lot of the people who are listening are going to be coaches. And so one of the things that can happen when you're coaching is that you're, you may have a client who becomes overly needy mm. and they demand more of your time, especially if you're doing things like, oh, you get unlimited coaching, you know, unlimited emails and you get, you know, 50 whoa, whoa, whoa. emails. Whoa, right? whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just going to like say right away, whoa. Yeah. But on average, usually you can do unlimited communication and it's not a big deal because the average person is reasonable, right? The average person, yeah. But when you get an unreasonable person, you need to start addressing not what they're writing you about, but, but the meta of the conversation. You need to start looking at them and saying, okay, so you have sent me 25 emails in the last two hours. That is not reasonable. I am not going to respond to them. You are in a manic place. You need to go talk to your therapist and get back on track because I cannot help you when you're in this state. You need to get your state under control. And that is you know, because I'm very clear that I don't do therapy. I do coaching. And for coaches out there, if you are not a licensed therapist, you need to be very clear about what is therapy and what is coaching. Right. And that's, that's a very important distinction that you need to know. And when somebody's in a state of panic and manic and stuff like that, that is a therapeutic response. You need to have a therapeutic response. You, they're in fight or flight. They're in panic. They're in all these things. And that is a therapeutic. They, they need a therapeutic response. They need somebody who is a therapist to address that. And, you know, could I spend three hours talking them out of it? Yeah, but that's not what they're paying me for. Right. So, you know, you need to be clear what the, what the confines of your contract is and then state the boundaries and say, look, I need to be very clear that you are in a place where you need to be talking to a therapist right now. This is not what I do. You have not contracted with me to pull you out of a manic panic state. My Mm -hmm. job is to keep you on track with X, Y, and Z. And so, you know, you need to be clear about that. And then there are going to be people who are just needy in general, not manic panic, but needy, right? And one, you would hopefully be able to um, filter for that when you're, when you're signing up clients, because, you know, some clients are in, they're, they're in such a needy state around their work that they're really in victim around their work. And if somebody's in victim, they're not coachable right? Mm -hmm. They're, they're literally just doing, Oh, do it free me. And if, if they're in that state, great, they should buy a done for you package, not a done with you package. And so if they're in that state, they need a done for you, not a done with you. And if they bought a done with you, then you need to address that because Mm -hmm. that's not, they're not participating. They're just, Mm -hmm. you know, handing you their need. And so there's boundaries, right? You need to set boundaries. You need to be able to address it if you have conflicts. So if one of your students is beating up on another one of them in a group environment, you need to be willing to step in and say, no, 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 because there can be no growth where there is no safety in a coaching environment. And so if you as the coach are not willing to step up and put an end to the unsafe space, then everyone in your program is losing benefit. Mm-hmm. And they all feel unsafe and no growth will happen, right? Mm-hmm. So you need to be willing to step up and be like, no, you're not doing that. You know, hit the mute button. Don't let them talk anymore. <laughs> you know, mute them out, kick them out of the meeting, whatever you need to do, and then address it after the meeting, whatever. But, you know, that needs to be dealt with. You need to be able to say, okay, no, you're not coaching other people. This is why my contracts actually say you are not allowed to coach other people because all my, a lot of my people are coaches or they are the person that everybody goes to in their lives. Right. You know, 
And so I, you know, there's two reasons for that is one is keeps the space safe for other people. And two is it keeps them focused on their own stuff, which is what they're supposed to be doing, what they're paying for in the program. It, it, a lot of people will avoid doing their own work by coaching others and investing in other people's issues and being like, oh, look, I can show I'm good by doing this with somebody else. It's like, yeah, but that's not what you're here for, right? So mm -hmm. these are all boundaries that need to be set within a coaching environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm thinking about a, um, just trying to think about like kind of conflicts and it in, in, again, in kind of business and, and in the coaching setting. And I think that it really, in the, in your group setting, it's really about how you kind of set it up and the expectations and framework and group agreements. So in a, in a group setting, you, uh, you know, the kind of highest and best recommendation is that you, you have group agreements. So when you right. start your, start your program that they're written and then you're, you know, kind of reiterating for the first, if you've got like a closed group, you're re reiterating them for the first couple of calls or as needed. So as a, as a coach or as you're facilitating and coaching, you're kind of noticing if things are looking like that they need a reminder on certain things. And that can do a lot towards kind of pre-managing so it doesn't turn into a conflict. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking about one of, I think I only ever had like one group conflict and it wasn't even... I wouldn't even say it was a conflict. It just was starting to feel a little bit tense. And it was a conversation around gender pronouns and naming. And there were different perspectives. So in terms of holding the space for people to share perspectives and to come to agreement. And it it yeah. So as a facilitator that you're you're creating that space to do that and not not necessarily shutting people down just because you want to avoid, right? So sometimes it can actually be beneficial for the group as well. Yeah. Well, and, and being able to, to speak to it makes a lot of, makes a lot of sense, right? So sometimes, sometimes you need to speak to it. Sometimes you need to say, okay, so let me just state this for the group. You don't want to call yeah. somebody out in the middle of a coaching yeah. call you know, unless yeah. they're being actively abusive. You know, you don't want to yes. single somebody out, yes. but if they are being actively abusive, you absolutely need to single them out. Right. Yeah. But, it, but if they're just violating the rules, you can mm -hmm. just say, Hey, I want to remind everyone that we're not yes. doing this. Right. But, and then say, you know, I'm sure you probably just forgot and it's just a habit. I totally understand. And this is how we're doing it. Right. But if there's active, actively problems happening. So like I had a group once where somebody came in and within the first call, it became clear that they were not capable of managing their own ways of receiving information. So I would say things like we feel this way and we feel that way. And, you know, as a group sort of thing around, these are the types of things that people in the group will likely feel just to sort of normalize it. Right. And yeah. she kept going, well, you can't tell me how I feel. <laughs> no, and, I can't. <laughs> and I was like, I'm Sorry. not You're telling not you possibly. how yeah, I'm not telling you how you feel. I'm trying to normalize that it's okay to feel yeah. this way if that's yeah. the case. And I, yeah. you feel free to opt out of any of the statements that I make internally. You know, I, I'm not trying to gaslight you. That is not the, the purpose of this communication. And she could not do it. And over the course of the entire call, she was just like, ah! very combative. And I, we got to the end of the call and I said, why don't you hang on, hang on to the call? And I said, this is not the program for you. I'm, I'm sending you your money back, right? And I was just like, you know, it's clear that this is not going to be a good place for you. You're not getting that, anything no. out of it except triggered. No. I, I'm not, the, the way that this is going to go is not going to work for you. So let me give you your money back so you can spend that doing something that's going to be more productive for you, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how I phrased it is let's do it in a way that's going to work for you. Not you suck and you're disrupting my system. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. that you're being yeah. disrupted in the group and whatever, because, you know, it, it was both were true right? And how you language it makes a difference. And so she left going, oh, good. I, I got out of this and I'm, I'm, you know, now I can do this instead of being angry at me for saying you're being disruptive yeah. and I'm kicking you out. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. you know, there's, there's a difference there. Yeah. And so, you know, everything has its own thing. And in, in seven years of running group programs, I've had to kick exactly two people out. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, it doesn't happen a lot, 
but it, it does happen. And so, you know, you, you've got to be prepared to deal with it. And that's part of managing conflict. Just think it might be helpful to even just kind of quickly outline like a process, right? So if, if you haven't been able to, to so you want to deal with it like early and quick, right? And soon mm-hmm. you want to manage your own state. You want to be respectful. You want to be curious. You want to try to understand, you know, kind of how the other person is feeling, thinking, all of that kind of stuff. And if yeah, that's- I mean, that place right there, I just want to stick something in because yep. my, my people tend to be overly understanding. Right. Mm-hmm. And so they'll be like, I, I really understand why you're doing this because you've got all this trauma in your background and that's yep. why you're doing this. Yep. Da, da, da. So here's the rule. Okay. I will be this much less understanding than I am treated well. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's yep. the rule because otherwise your understanding will get you walked on. Yeah. And so you're, you're this much, just a little bit less understanding than you are treated well. So as long as they're treating you well, 99% of the time, if they have the occasional blow up, you're like, okay, I can understand that. Okay. But if they are treating you badly on a regular basis and walking all over you, then they don't get the understanding. You will still understand, but you do not have to be understanding. You don't have to allow Yeah. And so by understanding, I don't mean like permissive. It's not permissive. It's not a permissive, but it's your 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 taking into account their perspective. So correct. Then if it it still hasn't, if it's kind of gotten to a point where it's escalated, then you need to put some framework and parameters around it. So in terms of this is this is how we're gonna have this conversation. We're, you know, we're can we agree that we're not gonna be, you know, we're not gonna yell. We're right. not going to swear at each other. We're not going to be verbally abusive. We're both going to be present. If we, you know, if we notice that we're starting to feel emotional, we'll take a time out. We'll like, whatever that is, that we're agreeing that this is the outcome that we, that we want, you know, and, and so knowing that there are sometimes it escalates to the point where, and I've, you know, I'm trying to think I've never, I've never actually kind of gotten to that point in my, myself because you're often, you're, you're managing it, you're noticing it like way before it gets to that point, but yes. if it does get to that point, right. To put some frameworks around it. Yeah. For, and for and it, this is the other piece is, is don't let it go on too long. No, no, okay? no. you got to address it quickly. So, mm-hmm. you know, you have to be able to, so sometimes it's something that's happening in the moment when you're watching it happen. And then sometimes it's stuff that's happening in the background where, you know, two of your, your people are talking to each other, whether it's in, in program or outside of program, and they're having conflict. And now you have to figure out what story is the right story, right? Right. Because there's always some truth in both stories, right? And is it yours to deal with? Correct. Yes. Sometimes sometimes it is. And sometimes it isn't. Yeah. Yeah. If it's in program, yeah, it's yeah. yours to deal with. Yeah. If they're doing yeah. it in program, yeah. it's yours to deal with. If it's outside of program, it may not be yours to deal with. But yeah. if it's creating toxicity within the program, even if yes. it's out of program, then it's yours to deal with, right? So, you know, then you have to do things a little bit more. You know, you have to, you may have to talk to other people if they're involved and things like that. And, and you have to make it very neutral. And there's lots of ways that you have to address things, right? But when that happens, you have to be willing to pull the trigger and make a decision quickly and be done quickly if it needs to happen that way. Mm-hmm. But you want all of the information so that you don't have other issues in the in the completing of it. So uh, all my contracts have language around what the rules are and exactly what's expected and what happens if you don't follow them and all of that, right? So all of my contracts are there for that. So, you know, that's another reason why we have good contracts in business is so that we have the backup to be able to say, hey, you knew what the rules were coming in, you signed this contract and this is how it goes. And, And I also include confidentiality clauses in my contracts so that we don't have people's stuff end up other places and things like that. So, you know, that's important too. So this good contracts make for good partnerships. They make for good client relationships. They just good contracts, you know, it's like good fences make good neighbors, good contracts make good business, right? So yeah, it's super important if you're going to be doing anything that's longer than, you know, two minutes. (laughs) So yeah, so just food for thought on that one. Anything else you wanted to add to the mix? 
Oh, you were doing a, a thing that I interrupted with the thing. So you were you were sum, summing up the the process. So yeah, I think we I think we got there. I think we okay. got there. So cool. we, yeah. yeah. Okay. I feel complete. Okay. Well then. Okay then. There we go. So we will talk to you in for a landing. <laughs> <laughs> we will talk to you next week. And don't forget that what you focus on is what expands, what you intend is what you create. And so choose wisely. And we will see you next week on the Ascend, uh, not the Ascend, Why? on the Align portion of our podcast. Yeah, that's what I get for trying to add something into the end. So have a good one, guys. <laughs> So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, 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 oh,